Being a Division I tennis player and then learning how to walk again was a reality check. It didn't feel real. It kind of felt like I was in, you know, having a bad dream. Jack was always really healthy, never really sick. He had probably more injuries than illnesses. When your only goal is to get to the next hour, get to the next day, it's a pretty worrying feeling. And you don't really think about surviving, but you do it. Things may go wrong. Things may you know, not turn out the way you want them to. But at the end of the day, you have to keep being positive and, and find the good moments, um, even if it doesn't seem like there are any. I guess officially met Jack five years ago. Uh, it was at a uh, tournament in Cleveland, Ohio, and former Spartan who played for me is his coach, Grant Asher, and, and he mentioned, hey, you got to take a look at this kid. Remember specifically seeing him play this one match. It was a match that uh, he probably shouldn't have won, but won, and definitely was a, a moment for me. He said, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to get this player. Growing up, had no affiliation to Michigan State. Every year they have a junior tournament at the outdoor courts. Playing there, seeing the stadium in the background, I just fell in love with the school, I fell in love with the campus. Honestly, it was just a can't say no situation. When Jack came in, he had a phenomenal summer. He came in really hot, and I specifically remember that, you know, once he came in the fall, he actually struggled a lot. He wasn't winning matches. You know, sometimes that happens. I did not have the results that I wanted, but, you know, tried to work hard, tried to stay patient with it, and I was kind of fighting for that last spot in the starting lineup, and things were starting to go the way that I wanted to. And he came back uh, in the spring, and. You know, was in our doubles lineup, earned a spot in our singles lineup down low, and he was an easy freshman year for him. And it turned out to be even, even tougher as time went on. I started noticing I was having some issues with my stomach, and I didn't really think much of it. Also, trying to vie for that sixth spot, I didn't really want anything to come in between that. I wanted to play. I remember going to watch the Spartans play Harvard. And when I saw him, he looked really thin. I was down about 25 pounds. Towards the you know, beginning of the third set, I just felt like I couldn't really go anymore, couldn't really play. Felt like a slug on the court and, and kind of knew at that point that something was really wrong. I got a phone call from Coach Orlando that he was bringing Jack to the emergency room. They gave him some medication, but they also said that he should follow up with a gastroenterologist and have a colonoscopy. He had a pretty severe case of a, it's an inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease can um, encompass um, a, kind of a wide variety of, um, of diagnoses from ulcerative colitis to Crohn's disease. It was diagnosed, they did biopsies, it was diagnosed as ulcerative colitis. Uh, it's an autoimmune disease where uh, your immune system starts attacking parts of your body. I was able to be put on a medicine, so I was, you know, luckily able to feel uh, pretty good within a couple months after that. We gotta focus on what we need to do to win. All right, focus on what we need to do to win. That's what competitors do. That's what you need to do here. Come on, don't get frustrated, let's play fresh here. From the day that our season ended his freshman year, he took that summer very seriously. He trained with a vengeance, and over the summer he started to put together some results that we saw in the recruiting process where we really believed that he could do it. I never thought that I could see him raise his level that high in such a short period of time. Wait, good stuff. Hey, we won that match because of you. If you don't turn your match around, we don't win that match. All right, good stuff, proud of you. Started out really, really well in the spring, was playing the best tennis of my life. I think I won eight matches in a row to start the year. I really felt like I was starting to make that leap to the next level. He had uh, two big ranked wins. One was against Alex Lebedev from Notre Dame, who was probably a top 20 collegiate player at the time. You know, that's where I really thought, wow, this guy's really taken off. I just remember after that match, he just said, hey, I've kind of bluffed it to this point. I thought I could win, but I never knew I could beat somebody this good. And he took a photo of the scorecard. He had it in his phone, and that was proof to himself that, hey, I can do this. And he pulled off some more ranked wins that season, and I think he got up to his highest 74 in the collegiate rankings. Well, he turned back in August uh, of his junior year. And one thing about, uh, about Jack, he never let anyone in that he was hurting. We were playing golf, and he had told me that he thought something was up. And then he went to go visit his brother in Chicago, and he came home, and he told me there was definitely something wrong. 
you know, started noticing similar things to, to the freshman year, outside of the fact that it was a little bit worse this time. I came down to East Lansing and I picked him up and he was admitted into the hospital. With this disease process, it can be a lot of trial and error, a lot of question marks. This can be not necessarily a black and white um, diagnosis, so um, it can be kind of a frustrating situation. So I was sent home uh, on a new medicine, tried that new medicine, did not work. Uh, so I got sent back to the hospital, and I think that's when we kind of started to worry. People started talking about clinical trials because I wasn't getting any better. They would always have a new treatment, and that would be the light at the end of the tunnel, and then they would have that, that medicine, and it wouldn't work. It was horrible. Every day presented us with a new problem. He got pneumonia. They thought he was septic. The gastroenterologist brought it up to us and said that there's a possibility that he's going to lose his colon. Which I, you know, had no idea was possible. I didn't even know, you know, can you, like, do that? Like, how serious is it going to be? You know, my first thought was, you know, can I play tennis? Fortunately, the answer was yes. Um, you know, I had to get through the surgeries, obviously, but I hadn't eaten in about two weeks. I was 50 pounds underweight. Mentally, I was you know, kind of horrible. The only thing you're thinking about is getting better, and it almost drives you crazy. Just, you know, keep thinking about that thought. And around, I would say, week five in the hospital, that's when I just started to feel like a mannequin almost. And, you know, that's when things really took a turn for the worst. Hey, Ranks, I know you're going through some crazy, crazy times. None of us can even know what you're going through, but I know you're in for a battle, all right? And there's no other guy on this team that can battle harder than you. I know you're gonna be back, and we can't wait. Super proud of you. I know you're in a tough time, man, but no one loves you more than your brothers. Spartan pride. We visited him in the hospital. You know, he had the gown on, and we were talking with him, and you could tell his cheeks were sunken in. And it just didn't seem like he was, you know, the same Jack. And it really wasn't until he stood up to go to the bathroom. When he got up and, and you know, he had the gown on and, you know, we see the back of his legs and his legs were so skinny, so skinny. After seeing him as a six foot two man at 120 pounds, there was less than 0% chance in my mind that he was actually going to make it back. That was a real eye-opener for me that, we're, hey, this, this is really, really serious. We're in deeper trouble than I thought we were. And, uh, you know, from there, I think it was like two or three days later that they had to have emergency surgery. Jack wouldn't take any of the hard drugs, the opiates, because he didn't want to violate NCAA rules. And that day, he was begging for drugs and they couldn't get him comfortable, maybe for a half an hour at a time, and then the drugs would wear off. And that night, I was at the hospital, I stayed with him because I knew something was wrong, and that was the night that the pain started, and the doctor called me in the middle of the night and said, we think he's losing his colon, that it's perforated. He was very sick. Once the colon perforates, bacteria will spill into the abdominal cavity, and the body starts having a septic response, and that can be a, a fatal situation. So usually you have um, only a couple hours to act. From that point, you know, the, the clock's ticking. I was in unbearable pain. My heart rate was 150, 160. You know, taking a breath hurt. It really, it really hurt. And uh, so I was trying not to take breaths, but I had to take breaths every single time I took a breath. I'm a tennis parent, so I always wanted him I always wanted him to play tennis because that's what he wanted. And when he was so sick, lying in that hospital bed, it didn't matter anymore. I wanted him to be okay. And there were points that we didn't know if he was gonna live. At that moment, it was, you know, screw tennis, screw school. The only thing I can remember thinking about was just help me. Like, just help me. I, I just want this pain to be over. And a little bit in my mind was like, you know, can I, you know, can I get out of this? From the pre-op room to, you know, a couple days after being in the ICU, I honestly couldn't tell you what happened. I had tubes going, you know, down my throat, on my nose. I had, I think, seven IVs in. Unbeknownst to me, I had zero muscle at this point. Even sitting up was a challenge at first. 
When you think of the guy who was beating Notre Dame or Northwestern or Wisconsin, not even being able to walk, it's, it's a big difference and it was, it was hard. The fact that he was alive was the best part. From sitting up, went to standing up, five, 10, 15 seconds, just increasing. From standing, you know, I started walking on a cane like an old person, it, you know, it was a little bit embarrassing, but was able to start walking on my own again. It's funny, when we're doing conditioning sessions and if we're worried about how fast a guy is getting off the line or if a guy touches the line, and you see one of your players learning how to walk again, it uh, puts it all in perspective. Go. I vividly remember standing in the ICU with his mother and she was asking me, you know, well, when can he get back to practice? And I was like, he almost, you know, died. You know, he was really sick. I did think that he'd probably get back to tennis, but I had no clue if he would be able to get back to the state that he was previously. Who's gonna miss? As soon as I had that first surgery and the doctor told me, you know, eventually you'll be able to play, you know, I kind of took that as a challenge and, and honestly, it, you know, it made me excited. I had two more surgeries to go through to kind of complete the process of, of returning my body to normal. They told me, the better shape you are for this second surgery, the easier it's gonna end up being. It's gonna get easier and easier. Excellent, that way to work. We wanted to do everything we could to make him feel part of the team and we gave him the position of being a volunteer coach. He would help out uh, during game day matches and we were just doing it to give him something to, to play for, something to live for. He went back and he was feeling good and he had an ostomy bag. I remember coming to see him hit. He asked me to come watch him play and I couldn't believe that he was on the tennis court. Even just being out there, hearing the balls hit the ground, hearing the rackets hit the ball, the smells, the sights, the sounds is just surreal. And every time that I had surgery, I was just counting down the days until I could come back and start playing with the guys again. When you talk about peaks and valleys, there were probably about three times where we looked over the past two, three years, we, we were looking in the rear view mirror and we thought this thing was past him and he made a comeback, he got strong, he started playing and practice and really competing and then only to get floored again. I thought, you know, after this last surgery, they give you two months and you should be fine, you should be normal. I started trying to play again. After every long training session, the only thing I'd want to do is go lay in bed. He would walk out of practice, and we talk about emptying the tank at practice with our guys. Jack would empty the tank. And then we got in some competition, and you throw competition at Jack, and he, he says, Coach, I want to play. And he'd be competitive with the guys. He, I know he beat some of the guys. But it would take him about a week after competing, it would take him a week to be able to play again. And, you know, I, I didn't know how that was all going to work. I tried to push myself, push myself, push myself. Essentially, out of practice, I pretty much collapsed and just couldn't go. Talked to my doctor and I was like, you know, I don't think I'm supposed to feel this way. People lead really normal lives and, and I'm struggling to lead that right now, so. My doctor recommended me to a specialist. She was able to diagnose me uh, with a different uh, irritable bowel disease called Crohn's disease. Hey, uh, before we get started with dynamics, just say hey, we all know it's, uh, it's a big day, obviously. The wing's coming back. Uh, handle those emotions, play for each other, play for Spartan Nation. Let's give it everything we have. Let's empty the tank. Beat the Hokies on three, one, two, three. Beat the Hokies! Jack is the strongest person I know. He has got the heart of a Spartan. The moment he steps back out on the court and is competing for Michigan State, will will be amazing. The fact that he's fought so hard to be where he is, I, I have no words. I think I'll just cry. <laughs> Happy tears. The big thing that I've learned throughout all of this is, is just to keep going. Get to the next minute, get to the next hour. Surround yourself with the people that want the best for you and want you to be the best that you can be. When it gets tough, because it will be. When it gets tough, I want you guys to look to your guy to your left, look to your guy to your right. Hey, do it for him. Do it for them, okay? Let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Go, 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 go,
Rocky! Have dreamt about this moment, the, the first match of the regular season, for over two years now. That's my boy. I can't imagine how incredibly special and, and nerve wracking it'll probably be, you know, when I step up on this court. But I'd have it no other way. Playing number two singles on court six is senior from Birmingham, Michigan, Jack Winkler. Let's go! Come on! Let's go! Come on! I got you. I can't be any more prouder of what he's been able to do, whether he wins another match or not. I mean, the kid could have quit a long time ago. There's something special about Jackson Winkler, there's no doubt about it. Come on! Every match he plays and every day he continues to walk out, it is a miracle. Every time I see the scars on my stomach, I think, what are you doing this for, you know? What's your goal? I lost almost everything. I was there. He wants it. He wants it. And, and you don't get through what he's got through without having a vision, without having goals and having a drive. That's uncommon. We're proud to call him a member of our team, and, and he's a big time leader of this program and, and one of those guys is a coach that you'll never forget. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to play tennis at the collegiate level, at the pro level, whatever it was, just at a high level. And it was a big goal for me to be able to do this again. This right now is the best tennis I could possibly play win, lose, or draw, without a doubt. Everything that I've been through, everything that I've dreamed of leading to this moment, everything is a, is a gift. It feels unbelievably special. Yeah! Yeah!